All right, today's topic, how to put holes in copper. All right, so what you're probably looking for is the answer to how do you get this look, okay? And this look right here yields really, really, really amazing effects when electroformed because it already has a texture to it. This, when electroformed. And if you think it looks good on a bracelet, you should see what it looks like on a ring. We'll yield this. When electroformed. All right, so I've cut holes in copper using three different ways. Um, the first way I'll share with you is through electrochemistry. Okay, you can use salt and water to cut a hole through copper. You would just take any kind of plate and you paint it with enamel paint. It's that tester brand model paint that you get in most hobby stores. Enamel paint works really well and the areas that you don't paint get eaten away in the liquid. So that's one way to do it. You can just electrochemistry uh, electro um, etch the copper away leaving everything that is masked behind. I didn't quite like that as far as a production of course. Let's say you were doing a whole bunch of this stuff, you would need a huge bath. Uh, salt corrodes everything around everything so all your tools no matter how careful you are uh, the salt just corrodes everything and it was just a huge mess. So I wouldn't do it as a production run, but if you've never etched copper before, I would totally try it out. It is pretty fun. So that led me to torches. Okay, so I started to uh, buy torches. I bought the Little Smith torch. It was a little tiny torch and it uh, cut, cut a hole in copper pretty easy, but it wasn't really detailed. It was my favorite torch in the white world. I would purchase one today. Um, it is very handy to own one, but then I found out later on that a little smith torch and this torch, the only thing different between the two is this. So $300 for a little smith torch at the time, or you can buy at Harbor Freight a torch <laughs> and then order a head for it that goes here and it is the same <laughs> as the Little Smith torch. And this one's so much easier to hold. Like, I, I love this torch. And it's a very cheap torch. So this is propane oxygen torch. And it can cut a hole through copper. But it still was not the answer. But it did lead me to another tool in my tool shop that I use all the time, which is the torch. And that's how I get these roundy things. See the, this rounded off area right here is I'll use a torch and it'll bead up in those areas. Finally, finally the answer came to me and that is a plasma cutter. So I found a machine, I leased it. It was the best thing I ever did. I use it all the time. I use it on everything. It has a one millimeter kerf, okay? And if you don't know what a kerf is, it is the space between a cut. And that is really cool. So I'll take sheet metal. You can see this giant sheet of piece of sheet metal, okay? I get this locally. Um, we have a metal place in town. Uh, they called Alro Steel, and they have screwed up metal that they sell very cheap. So there's my there's my ability to get it. It's only sold in the store. Um, it's actually out of their factory. It's called uh, like their Oops Metal. So what I'll do is I'll take it first and I'll cut out strips like this, and then I'll put it in the vice grips here. 
like that. Put on the glove. Put on the sunglasses. And to cut a small hole, So was it a wise investment to buy a $3,000 plasma cutter to actually cut holes in copper? I can tell you that it was. It was. Not because I can cut holes in copper, but I can make all kinds of crazy stuff. And I can gouge metal. I can sculpt on metal. Um, I can do things that most plasma cutters can't do. So I have had the ability to test drive the 35 and the I think 65 or is it 85 so the 45 is the only one that works really good on 16th inch copper with the precision that I just showed you okay it does have a fine cut the other ones do uh, the 85 has a fine cut but it feels too overpowered uh, it goes right through it and it leaves uh, too big of a kerf. The 35 is not powerful enough. Don't even go near it. I owned one for a while. It's the worst machine I ever owned. I'll tell you before you purchase one of those that you need clean air. Absolute bone dry air. So you have to buy this. Okay. This is a way of taking your air compressor and making bone dry air. It runs, uh, it's got a, a material in there that sucks the moisture out of the, the compressor. That unit alone is, uh, I think, $500. So you have the hypertherm, then you have that. And luckily I already had a compressor, but you still need a beast of a compressor. I would highly recommend like a, a six horse 25 gallon at least. I won't show you that because it's really ugly. But yeah, six horse 25 gallon at bare minimum. All right, before I go, I just reviewed the video and I just wanted to include a couple things that was really, really mind stumping for me when I first purchased a lot of this stuff. Okay, so first the Hypertherm 45 XP. If you do get that, you'll need these things right here. These are your consumables. You won't go through them very often. This is the fine cut. Uh, this has lasted me a year, two years, just this. And you look, there's still more. I, if you get the, I've got the one I used. So don't buy a lot of these, but the fine cut is what you're going to need. If you get a torch, okay, if you're really interested in the torch that I showed, I use a zero 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 head on my torch. Okay, and a number four for everything else. This is really good for really small stuff like that little smith torch and this one's really good for everything else you can blast through copper you can weld a whole bunch of copper together thick thick copper you can weld it together really quick with this again that is with oxygen and propane not oxyacetylene cool so that's it other than that Great question. I've had that question quite a bit. How do you cut a hole through copper? Hope it's fond of video that you like. And uh, yeah, have a good one.